Jesus says of that day knows no man not even the son only the father of course because right. he came willingly as a man do you understand but not divine at the same no, no. time <laughs> hold on i can ask you that i asked you if for example god is all powerful and he said god can do anything yeah let's say god out of his volitional will he comes down as a man he eats and drinks and he prays what makes him distinct from the creation what, emphasize on what you mean by this right. thing. Man is in need of food. Yeah. Man is in need of water, yeah. sustenance. Yep. You know God, why? God is free of all needs. He's self-sufficient. Oh, right. Course, yeah. Now, if God, as the Creator, came fully God, fully man. No, why? I'm not. I'm not even talking about fully God, no, fully no, no, man. No, I'm asking he, you, why what is? He need food? No, is that what you're no, no. I didn't ask you that. Okay. I asked you by definition, the Creator. Yeah. I, my argument is this, the creator is distinct from the creation. Right. If the creator becomes the creation, what makes him distinct from the creation? But he was not fully the creation, do you understand? He wasn't fully the creation. As in, he was fully God and fully man, he wasn't fully created. So how can we recognize his attributes? What would you mean by Right, it? right. The attributes of man, attributes of creation is limited and not perfect. Of course. The but he's unlimited. The, wait, wait. The attributes, the attributes of God is not wait, wait, one second. Wait, wait, one, se no, one second, one second. One second, one second, one second. One second. One second. But the attributes of the attributes of God is unlimited. Wait. The attributes of God is perfect and complete in his knowledge, in his wisdom, in his power. And many other attributes. Wait, one second. The attributes of man, the attributes of creation is limited and not perfect. So my question is, if God becomes part of the creation, how would we recognize him as the creator? Because he came without sin. That's the distinction. So he came upon this earth sinless. We have all sinned. Everyone. He was, he was the only sinless. Do you know why lamb. that? Do you know why that's fallacious? No. What is sin by definition? What is sin by definition? But John the Go, Baptist wait one second, sin. one second, please. What is sin by definition? Let's break it down. Yeah, let's. I'm just trying to validate no, because you, you, you mentioned. And then you can maybe have also what might not be written in terms of wrongdoing. That's what I mean. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Any wrongdoing. That, any wrongdoing. So any can wrong God? So, so 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 by definition, I disagree with that definition. A sin means transgressing against God's law. Well, that's you're being very particular there, but you know what I mean. You know what I meant. But, okay. But if yeah, I okay. hang on, if I commit idolatry, is that a sin? Yes. Why is that a sin? Because you're worshiping. So come on, take you're what? worshiping another God. Which means that I have transgressed the boundaries that God put forth. Correct? On humans. Right. On so humans. how can you say God is sinless? He's the one that legislates in the first place. Yes. That doesn't make sense. How, how does that make sense? Because God is the one who legislates to his creation. So for you to say sinless, it's like saying God can be judged when he is the judge. No. Honestly speaking, he judge. so, so can you please address back here? Yeah? What makes the creator distinct from the creation? How can I recognize he's the creator? By being sinless. By being sin yeah, of course. If I make because the, what, what on, one second, one, what one, is distinct? Sebastian, let me hold on, hold on. What is distinct from us and from any other creation here that we can see, and the closest thing distinction that we can get to God? Very good, because the Creator, the Creator is above His creation. He is all yes, powerful, he is. all knowing. Yes, yes. You look what, 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 one, one second, one second. Yes, he, you look at the wonders of His creation. We can recognize his beautiful names just by looking at the creation from yeah. Revelation, all powerful, all knowing. Now, how can I recognize this creator if he comes on earth imperfect? He how was perfect I... though. What okay. wasn't perfect about Was he perfect in knowledge? When... Everything. Right. According... Everything. Right. So are you saying that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man? Fully God, fully man. Right. In Mark 13, 32, Jesus says of that day knows no man not even the son only the father of course because right. he came willingly as a man 
Do you understand? But not divine at the same no, time. No, 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 no. But he, Jesus speaks in parables. So you have to look beyond. That was, no, no, no. Hold on. That's not a parable. I know it's not a parable. But so he, why are you saying it? No. We do it. We do it. <laughs> Sebastian, look, 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 let me be honest with you. Look, we're not here to win arguments. No, no, no. no, okay? no, no, no. We're here to learn and exchange information, okay? Now, we can speak very well in the spirit of learning, okay? I'm not here to box you in, you're not here to box us in, right? Let's just present our arguments, and then whatever you said that is good, I'll think whatever I say is valid, you should think, correct? So let's do that. But here's God, the thing, wait, wait, if oh I God. just come from where, where, where I stand, so I come with a very open mind, so I'm not narrowing any of my thoughts on Fantastic, anything. fantastic. Right? Can we agree that one of the primary attributes of God is that he's all-knowing? Not all-knowing in that he knows no, no, everything. Saying God has attributes is, is like almost comparing him to us. I mean, that doesn't really... No. No, Attri not. Attributes, wait, wait. No. Attri attributes. Yeah. attributes. What, what does attributes mean? Attributes is a word humans use. I mean, we can't really use that word and say, oh, God has attributes. So how can, yeah. how, how, how can we, how, how can we communicate? Well, how, 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 wait, hang on. How can we communicate each other because if everything's meaningless? Because as an imperfect creation that we are, yes. we do our best. That's not good. But if you believe that God revealed about himself yes. in the way that we can recognize him, <laughs> then you can't use the, you can't use, oh, but I can't recognize him. No, he revealed us in the way that we can understand, yeah. in the way that we can connect with him, correct? Okay. You all right, Sebastian? This happens every week. Is this your first time here? Yeah. Is this your first time here, yeah? <laughs> Is this your first time here? Welcome. Welcome to the park. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Right. So what I'm saying is that, look, why do we say that God is all-powerful, all-knowing? It's because Allah tells us in the Qur'an to reflect upon the wonders of His creation. Yeah, so He tells you to look at the stars, He, looks, he tells you to look at the moon, look at the, look, look at the fine balance in the creation, the tiniest molecule, the tiniest creature, the DNA. Yeah, so we could recognize His attributes through His creation all powerful all knowing well, but the creation on the other hand yes we have attributes but they're not perfect <laughs> attributes so my question is if god as the creator comes down in his creation then this creates confusion and it is not just from god to create this confusion that he will come as all knowing but at the same time he's telling people i don't know the hour but who said who said that it was confusing you said it was confusing to me it's not so, 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 do you, okay, first of all, do you agree that one of the primary attributes of God is all-knowing? Yeah. All-knowing? Well, no, I won't use the word attributes. He is everything. That's what I say. So, that, so uh, wait, hang on, that, but a Christian doesn't say that. No, no, no. Are but, you a Christian? Yes, I am. So, I, I want to, first of all, uh, find out your, your creedal belief. Right. So, he wants specific text. No, uh, not no. specific text. Your belief yeah, system. Your belief. Okay, because are you Trinitarian? Are you Unitarian? Are you Jehovah's Witness? What are you? No, I'm not Jehovah's Witness. Then so what are you? Um, Christian, I believe in the Trinity. And does Trinity tell you that everything is God? Everything is created by Him. No, you didn't say that. You said everything is God. I don't think He knows His creed. Okay. I don't think you know your creed. Look, first of all, yeah? First of all, I will tell you this. The concept of Trinity was not even preached by Jesus. Because it's mentioned in, in Mark's Gospel 12, 29, when the teacher of the law asked him, good master, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus says, the most important one is this, Hero Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. And the second one? And you shall love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second, if you want me to quote, and the second command is this, love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Okay? Now, Jesus did not say the most important commandment is, the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God, but these are three distinct persons, they're not three gods, but one essence, one God. That's not the language that Jesus used. Yeah, he's just confirming Moses. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, which is called the Shema. Here is Israel, the Lord, the God, the Lord is one. So he, he affirmed what is we call Tawheed, the unity of Allah, the oneness of Allah. He alone deserves to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth. Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers of Allah, but he never told his people to worship him. He told his people, be servants of Allah. Teach people to worship God the way how he's pleased. 
So pick up your cross, what does that mean? I'm sorry? Pick up your cross and follow me, what does that mean? Pick up the cross and follow pick me. Pick up your cross. Who and says that? Who, who says, says that? It says it in the Bible. No, who says that? Who? So exactly, you know, don't quote me on exact, exact. Just bring it, so you're on your phone. What did he say? I will find it out for you. What's it? Uh, pick up your cross and follow me. No, that's not Jesus. Unless it's Jesus. Unless Jesus says it, doesn't matter. Of God. What? Of God. Oh, when God speaks, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. there's the most authority. You need to bring him to Numbers 2319. Oh, yes. Isaiah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's fine. That. Uh, it is uh, Matthew no. chap yeah. chapter 16, yeah. verse 24. Okay. But Jesus told his disciples, okay. if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Okay. So it's not that he told them, pick up your cross and follow me. Okay. So how do you understand that verse? To live the way he did. I agree. Do you think you live the way how he did? I try to. Okay. Are you following the first commandment, the most important commandment from Jesus Christ? Uh, worship no other God but I. No. What is the most important commandment from Jesus Christ? I told you to you a moment ago. Do you think you're upholding the greatest commandment as a Trinitarian Christian? Uh, believe in uh, worship only one God. Is that the one you have? I don't know the exact verbally. Hero Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. No, no, no. So, my understanding is not written that way. But that's what the verse that's is the important. Jesus is just quoting what Moses came with, the greatest commandment in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. And you know, Jewish, you know, the Jewish people, you know, every morning they have to recite that. It's their declaration of faith. So, Jesus is just confirming what Moses came with, the greatest commandment. Moses did not preach the triangle. So, if Jesus is quoting from worship, Moses. Worship only one God behind. So, something that's not like what that. he said. Something no, no he didn't say that. Okay, so what did he say? No, he said, Here is your the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Right, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. That's not the Trinitarian formula. No. I, don't, I don't hear any Trinity here. Listen, yeah. it, seems like, it seems like you're taking it slightly out of context. Because one doesn't just mean singular. It doesn't, numerically, it doesn't mean a singular. But then I go on to the point of what are you? Are you just one? Are you one red blood cell? Do you think, do you think, this, command, do you think this commandment that Jesus came with is a new commandment? Or was this already known by the Jewish audience? The commandments were written by Moses. I know. So when Jesus quoted the Shema, Hero Israel, the Lord, the God, the Lord is one. Did Jesus quote that commandment according to the Jewish understanding? No, 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 no. If, if, the, if, no, no. if Trinity is such an important component, we should find statements from Jesus Christ saying that, but he didn't. He's just reaffirming Tawheed, the oneness of God. That Jews, they say, there's only one God, the God of Israel. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. That's what Jesus came with. That's why I'm telling you that you're not following the religion of Jesus Christ. You're following a religion about Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, I know Jesus is not a prophet. He is the son of God. That's, that's it. That's the thing. Have you, but Jesus said he is a prophet in Mark 6, 4. He's a prophet. So here, here I'm... Oh, look, let's be honest with you, Sebastian. Yeah? I always say this to the Christians. If you truly... If you, I, I want you to do comparative analysis when you get home, yeah? He has said, he has said he is I, I believe, I believe, no, look, no, no, I'm, look, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I think you're a truth seeker, okay? And I think, I think you need a sense of direction. And I'm giving you that sense of direction to help you, yeah? What I want you to do, you have a copy of the Bible, right? You got a copy of the Bible, yeah? What I want you to do is I want you to have all the teachings of Jesus, all the sayings of Jesus on one side, Paul's narrative on one side, and the gospel narrative. 
You tell me exactly whether you follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, and I don't think you are. In the Bible, I think you're trying to emphasize on a factual distinction, and you can't do that with the Bible because the Bible was written by man. But I know for a fact that this is the Word of God. So I can see where your contradiction lies. No, I'm not just. I'm not even critiquing. I'm not. I'm not even critiquing if the Bible is the Word of God or not. I'm just telling you to please investigate. Um, I'll, let, I'll let you know soon, inshallah. Just give me, I'm just going to conclude this two minutes, inshallah. Yeah? What I want you to do yeah, is I want you to actually study the Bible. No, I will. Right. And study the Quran at the same time. And you will see that we Muslims follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. We actually follow the teachings of Jesus Christ more than the Christian I don't believe he is a small God. That's the point. Okay, the Son of God is not blasphemous according to the Bible because in the Jewish language, sons of God means righteous people, yeah. servants of God. If you read Ephraim, is the Son of God. If you read in Luke chapter 2, verse 28, no. in the genealogy, in the genealogy, there is a distinction Adam is the Son of God. Uh, what you just said and holiness. <laughs> so it, it, it's a distinction. So, what's the distinction? The distinction is that man is a sinner, but the Son of God was never a sinner. That's about this, distinction. about this sinning thing, okay, I was no. earlier, I was earlier about to ask a question about this sinning. Homeboy, you told me earlier that someone died for our sins. So we already have a past. We moved on. Even if we sin, somebody has already died for us. That's your misunderstanding. How is it misunderstanding? Because you're, you're making it means sense. everyone. Okay, okay let's let's say let's say. Hold on, hold on. You said you said that Jesus died, so we're all safe. No, no, I didn't say that. I said if it's about sinning and we are sinners. It's immaterial because someone has already paid for that. Whether we do sins or not, paid for our sins. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So it means we're not sinners anymore. No, no, one second. We are, no. and we will continue to be sinners. But it's up what to did us. he die for? <laughs> for our sins, obviously. Sebastian, so what but there needed to be a, sac he was a sacrificial yeah, yeah. lamb. Do you understand? Yeah? Because we are not holy or worthy enough or uh, just enough. He had to come down. Sebastian. Go on, go. Sebastian. Look, I, I can see that you, you have a belief about Jesus dying for your sins, but I, 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 would, I would respectfully tell you, you haven't studied the gospel. Because Jesus never claims that. Jesus never said he died for people's sins. I challenge you to show me that. What he did say is how do you attain salvation? Do you know how? Thank you very much. The obedience of the law as well. Mark, Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Think about that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy but to kill. For verily I say unto you, until the heavens and the earth pass, not a jot or a chicken shall pass by unless all the law is fulfilled. And this, whoever teaches people not to follow the least of the um, not to follow the commandments is least in the kingdom of heaven. For as your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and, and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. This is so clear. Jesus is telling you salvation is through obedience of the law, the Torah. What does Paul say in Ephesians 2? 15? So I, in, in Ephesians 2.15, Christ died for our sins. I think it's in Ephesians or Corinthians. So my question is, are you truly following the teachings of Jesus Christ or are you following the teachings of Paul? Now, I don't expect you to answer, but it's for you to think about, yeah? Have a good evening. Take care.